but this next book, low key, went under the radar. Oh my goodness, comic fan. We're talking about Bunny Mask, Aftershock Karma. for this one. Dude, you know who did a variant? And I should have brought it up. I wonder if I can it. do it. I should have probably brought it up. I totally missed out. Let me see if I can do that real quick. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a cool cover. It's very subtle. Okay. Um, we're talking about Bunny Mask, and we have uh, Paul Tobin, Andrea. Oh, did we, we talked about that. Yeah, we already did that. Um, Paul Tobin, Andrea Muti, and Taylor Esposito. On the colors, yeah. On the colors. So we have Bunny Mask, issue number one, Aftershock Comics. Tell me how amazing is this book? Some of the most WTF moments I have experienced in a comic book that's as short as this in over a year. And not in a bad way. Right. This there's That's part of, I think, what we have to talk about here is how easy it is to WTF somebody into giving up on your book. Like, if you make it just so confusing, so weird so out there that it's easier just to say like, I'm out. Like I'll read any of the other comics that are in existence. There's a fine line between turning someone off with mystery and question marks and making them want to find what happens and like solve the mystery. Right. Bunny mask does a very good job of walking that line and making you want to kind of learn more about what the hell is actually happening. Tell me about what bunny mask is about. Huh? Well, this comic's hard to describe. Um, it starts with these two kind of, what do you call them? Like people who work for Child Protective Services. They're going on a call, right? Dude, this has one of the best intros right. to a thriller in a comic book on the first damn page in, that I've seen in quite a while. Let's, just, let's, let's walk them through this, this one page this of first, chaos. This is how the book starts. Can you zoom in a little more, pan around on this one? Yeah, page? yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll do it for the comic fam. Okay, Here look at go. this. 14 years ago. We have a daughter for the for the audio listeners, a, a, a daughter of this of, of this of the family. It's a father and a daughter. Father and daughter like this. And what is she doing, Ryan? She's smiling up at him, sitting on the kitchen table at a chair at the kitchen table, showing her pearly whites. Pearly whites, just cheesing for her dad. Dad says, "Yeah, that's good. That's good. Now, just hold still. This is going to be uncomfortable." What is he doing, Ryan? I can't tell. What did He's he shoving his fingers in her mouth. Yeah. Okay. He says, a little weird. It's going to be uncomfortable, but it needs to be done. Uh, and he starts chiseling uh, away I just, I at her teeth. I just got goosebumps right now. Yes. Just looking at this. Like, uh, Page hammer, one. Hammer and chisel in her mouth, just knocking her teeth out. What is going on? That's how you start this book. That's how, dude, comic books, hot damn. Right? It's like, it, if, you, if you're not feeling like, holy smokes, what is going on? WTF, I got to turn the page. Something's wrong. Something's slowing your comic. It reminds me of uh, the first Black Mirror. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, why do you start with this? Like, why do you start with this? That's pretty hardcore. But yeah. dude, you know what? Aftershock Comics, we got to give some kudos. <laughs> Consistent quality from this publisher. Correct. Con like literally every title we talk about, it's amazing. I've bring, we've brought a lot of action, uh, action comics, Aftershock Comics to the mic here to talk about. And they do a lot of really good uh, short five issue series. Sometimes they're four issues like this book, but... It reminded me of AWA Studios is my favorite publisher. They also do a lot of self-contained, smaller story mm -hmm. arcs, which I love. So this is a supernatural thriller mystery, okay? So I know it starts out kind of hardcore. Right. But that would be, in my opinion, probably as bad as it gets as far as grotesque. Sure. It's more supernatural and weird. There's way more like questions brought up throughout this comic book and WTF moments because you don't really know what's going on a lot of the time. But what we can say is that a gentleman, a father is having, he's clearly not right in the head. Something's wrong based with him. on that first. He's page. hearing voices. Yes. All right. And he immediately starts recruiting individuals, his daughter as well to start digging in a cave to uncover something that could only be described as a deity. Right. I don't really know how else to talk about it. I was getting it. like ghost vibes from this thing. We have the bunny mask. We have a character who is clearly sinister, powerful. Something's off. But slightly... Well, a little bit. Say it, say it, say it Ryan. Okay, she's a little sexy. She's, she's a little sexy. Something. It's kind of a weird thing going on here, Ryan. Something going on. She's I don't know. Very violent. She just kills a guy. That she does, but it's because she's taken out sickness. Sure. 
for whatever that means. So comic fam, we, we want to leave you with something to go and enjoy in this. We want to reveal it. But what I can say is that the constant questioning of the character's realities is also mirrored in the reader. The readers, as you're going through this, you're going to be like, what actually is happening? What is being said? What can other people hear? Is the character hearing this because they're going crazy or is there more going on? And it gets a little like Lovecraftian to a degree. I was reminded a lot of the works of David Lynch. Like this, this comic reminded me of like Twin Peaks specifically. Like something, somebody gets kind of roped into a situation that is just like beyond explanation. And there's clearly some kind of supernatural stuff happening and you're supposed to be confused. You're supposed to not know what's happening, but you're still sucked into it. But it's also very terrifying. For real. And you know, both of us, when we brought this on the screen to just kind of like prep for the show, we both had the same thing to say. Like we weren't sure what we were getting, but we had to keep going. We had to see what happened next. And that's the balance of these WTF moments that we're describing in comic books. Sometimes it's not done right. And you just are left with going, what the hell was that? Right. What did I just read? No, this is the opposite. This is like, I need to see what's happening next. Of course, that bar will be different for different people. Some people will read this and be like, I don't like it. I'm not into it. I'm going to close the book and move on. But dude, but look how good. Back to shadow, thick and bright. And then she talks strange. She talks strange, strange. And she just disappears into the shadows. And like, she calls shadows bright, which is exactly not the right way to say it. I don't know. It's fun. It's a weird, it's a weird series. It's definitely not going to be for everyone. I really appreciated the art by Andrea Muti. Same artist as Maniac of New York. You know, and that was something that I was thinking the entire time reading this. I'm like, I think this is the same person. Another Aftershock series. Fantastic. Yes. My favorite. Well, not my favorite. Fantastic's my word today, comic fam. Woo! It's a very good recent horror series. Horror slasher comic, which does not happen. That's right. And Aftershock hitting it out of the park every single time. I'm, I'm sp- I've been so impressed by this publisher. Thank you.